nice cup of cuckoo, Norman. Norman? Oh, no! He's not touched his eggy toast. Oh, he must have climbed out. Oh, the silly boy. doing out here? Ah, there you go. Now, where's Wooly? Huh? Ha ha! Don't worry, Wooly. Norman's on his way. I see no sheep. Norman! But I can hear Dillis. You don't think he's gone looking for Wooly, do you? Oh, you know how he loves that sheep. Fear not, Gillis. Oh, oh, oh. I'm, uh, I'm sure Penny and Elvis will find him. I'll stay here oh, and keep you company, eh? Oh, thanks, Trevor. But Norman needs me. I'm coming too. Um, OK, Dillis, but you'll have to wear a life jacket. Penny to Sam. I'm going to need your help. Norman Price is out in the flood water. I'm guessing by the field. Right. Uh, I'll stay here then. Keep a lookout for lions, Sam. I will, Bronwyn. I will. OK. All aboard. Budge up there, lion. I'll soon have you safe and sound. Um, now, keep still, everyone. Oh, um, uh, hey! Whoa! Ah! Oh, uh, ah! Wally, come back! Boy, oh, Shall we take another sweep of the area, Sam? No need. Down there, look. Sam to Penny, Norman is in Breaker's Field. He's in the water, as quick as you can. Thanks, Sam. Elvis, this is your big moment, boy. Crab Scuttle Cove? Oh, my goodness! It's the best. I'm stranded on the beach at Crab Scuttle Cove, and, 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 and the tide's coming in fast. OK, Penny and I will take Jupiter, contact Tom, and tell him we'll meet him there. Leave it to me, Sam. Well done, Elvis. Nice work. We'll make a station officer of you yet. Station officer Cridlington. I like it. Maybe we should swim for it. Absolutely not. That's far too risky. We'll stay put and wait for help. In 200 yards, stay put and... Don't worry, everybody. Sam will be here very soon. Oh, my belly. Maybe he's seasick. Oh, my poor precious puppet. Aha! It's Tom Thomas! Help is at hand! Come in, Tom. Good night, Sam. 
Send down the winch. The bus is nearly underwater. We're going to have to lift everyone off. No problem. I'm lowering the double harness now. Right here, Mandy. You first. Don't be frightened. Frightened? This is awesome. That's it, Tom. Steady now. Cool. I'll go back for the others. Soon have everyone safe and secure. Good work, Sam. Yeah. OK. That's the last one, Tom. Good job. Thanks, Sam. Over and out. That silly satellite navigation system must be faulty or something. You see? You just can't trust all these newfangled gizmos. But we'd never have been rescued without our mobile phones. Well, well apart from mobile phones. What about our walkie-talkies, sir? Yeah, well, obviously, apart from mobile phones and walkie-talkies, but don't you have a computer back at the fire station? Well, yes, yes. Oh, I suppose some modern gadgets do have their uses. Until they pack up and land you in trouble. Oh, I'm sorry, Station Officer Steele. Maybe we should have stuck to your good old-fashioned map. Oh, yes. Well, put it there, is it, eh? And never. Well, it's not too late to enjoy what's left of your day out. Yes, I'm ravenous. Where's that picnic basket? <gasps> Wonder you are feeling ill, Norman Price. You guys out the whole picnic. Sorry, ma'am. Oh, someone passed me a bucket. Oh, oh, you naughty boy. I hope Mike's OK. I need him to sing harmony with me. Don't worry, Elvis. I'm sure he'll be as good as ever. Follow me. Right. He's in here, is he? OK, Mike, I need you to stand back. I'm going to break the door down with my axe. R right you are, Sam. Jump in here, Lion. It'll keep you dry. Shouldn't you shut off the water? I'll get the pump ready. One thing at a time. The first thing we need to do is make sure Mike is safe. Mike, are you a safe distance back yet? Uh, yes, Sam. Grab my arm, Mike. Well done, Sam. Oh, Lion is safe. You did stay very calm. And you did one thing at a time. Oh, I wish I'd done that. I wouldn't have got into such a mess. Don't worry. At least you're safe. Yes. Thank you, Fireman Sam. Come on, Mike. Let's go and do our duet. Uh, wait a minute, Elvis. One thing at a time, remember? Yes, I I'll shut the water off at the mains. Elvis, can you help me get the pump to pump out all this water? And I'll go and get old Mrs Steele out of the <laughs> cupboard. Then we can all meet at the quayside for Elvis and Mike's big number. Come on, Elvis! Rock it like a rock god! Very good! Come on, boys! Splish, splash, I'm having a wash. Splash, splish, feel like a fish. Splish, splash, I'll be out in a flash. We're doing the splish, splash, you mean splish, splash, splash. <laughs> hooray, 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 well done, boys. <laughs> I mean, well done, men. <laughs> <laughs> Norman and Mandy in trouble? Ooh! Radar has come back to the Flood's house by himself. Helen thinks there's been some kind of accident. If I know Radar, it must be serious. Tell Helen to keep Radar there. We're on our way. Whoa! 
That was close. I wonder if those sheep have got something to do with the emergency. Any idea where Mandy and Norman were going, Helen? Mandy said just over the fields. Oh. Radar wants us to follow. I'll take the ambulance. Somebody might be hurt. Mike's van! Well done, Rita! You did it! Mike! Are you okay? I I'm fine, Helen. I just can't get out. The passenger door is still stuck. Oh, Mike! Okay, everyone, stand well back. Penny, run a hose round to the front of Mike's van in case anything catches fire. We'll have to cut you free, Mike. Penny, fetch the jaws of life. How did it happen? Something to do with a couple of runaway sheep, I shouldn't wonder. Yes, I was trying to hurt them into their pen. With radar, eh? I said he wasn't a sheepdog. I know. Here, Mike. Give me your hand. Oh, thanks, Sam. Oh, dear. I wish I could make things better. I'd better call the station and warn them about the sheep. <gasps> well? Good news. Mike Flood had the emergency and he's safe now. Well done, Radar, eh? What a <gasps> hero. Sam did say something about runaway sheep. <laughs> hey, sir. My hiccups? They're cured. Mike said I needed a fright. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> what? An out of control rocket heading for the high street? Ooh. Come in, Sam. There's a rocket heading towards the high street. This is not a practice run. Don't launch anything until we get back, Mike. Good job we had that training exercise, eh, Elvis? Yeah. So, where's this other rocket come from, Sam? <gasps> Out of space. This has got Norman Price written all over it. This is your rocket, eh, Norman? Uh, no, yes, it was an accident! OK, but right now I need to know how you made your rocket. Is it made from anything dangerous? I, I can't remember. I just did what it said in here. Uh, just more of it. Hmm. You're sure you didn't put anything else in there? No, just that stuff. Lots of it. It's a simple bottle rocket. It's just a very big one. I think it's all going to be OK. I'm sorry. I thought I could build a rocket that was as cool as Mike's. Mike has spent years learning all about rockets and how to build them safely. It's not something you can learn in a day. I know, Sam. And now I've ruined Mike's launch, too. Not necessarily. Once we've made sure the shop is safe, there'll still be time to get up to the cliffs. Thank you all very much for coming. And a special thank you to the Pumpty Pandy Fire Brigade for being here to make sure everyone is safe. Here, here. So it just remains for me to say... Five, a four, three, two, one! Whoa! A 
It's brilliant, Mike. Thanks, Norman. Hey, remember you said you'd help me make a rocket? Yes, but you're going to have to wait a while, Norman. Why? I've got a certain supermarket window to fix first. I'll have to order a new belt for your washing machine, Dillis. You must have overloaded it. It wasn't me. It was Norman. Now you know why I never ask him to do anything. <laughs> yeah, see you, Dillis. Hello. Hi, Mike. Norman! Oh, what now? I did the washing. No, you broke the washing machine. Oh, so now you need to ask Mike very nicely if you can wash our dirty clothes in his machine. What? But, uh, oh. Have fun, Norman. I wonder if Sarah and James want to go skateboarding. You know, Norman, I don't much like housework either. But if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing properly. Emergencies always happen when you don't want them to. Fire at the flood house, sir. Many eight meters as well. It's my fault. I, I went out and left the iron on. Well, we could all afford to be more careful, whatever job we might be doing. I'm sure I saw Santa, James. I did. I really did. Well, I can't see him anywhere. You must be imagining things, Sarah. Usual. I am not. Oh. oh, it's no good, Norman. We've lost him. Lost who? Santa. See, I told you I saw him. Never mind, Norman. We've already put up more lights than anybody in Ponty Pandy ever before. But, Mum, haven't we got another giant Santa? No, Norman, that was the last one. Couldn't you order one? Not a week before Christmas, I couldn't. He would never get here in time. You could tell them it was an emergency. Oh! Help! Emergency! Not like that, Mum. Don't be daft. Oh, 
Any plugs in one of these old adapters? That's what the problem was. Elvis is right, Dillis. Those old adapters are very dangerous. You must be careful not to overload your sockets. Look at this! I found some. We saw these first. I am a muscle picking machine. I found lots. Yeah. Hey, leave some for me. But you've already got loads. We're working together. <laughs> a better place with lots of muscles before the twin kick them all. You know, Elvis, the jaws of life are a great piece of rescue equipment, but they can't be used for every emergency. I know. Come on, Norman. Pull! Oh. It's wet! And getting wetter. The tide's coming in. We've got to get you out of here. Pull, Norman! I am, I am! But I'm stuck! But I can't leave you here. What are we going to do? Somebody's stuck amongst rocks on the beach. The beach, Sam. Somebody's stuck. Can you hear the tide coming in? Better bring the jaws of life, Elvis, just in case. Yes. Sweated in tight, Sam. I tried everything. Haven't tried everything. That's right, Elvis. There's one more thing we should try. Can you reach down to untie your laces, Norman? Um, I think so. Yes! Ah. Thank you, Fireman Sam. Oh, I wish I'd thought of that. Wait a minute. Where's my lucky bucket? Oh, it's gone! Bad luck, Norman. It must have floated away. Come on, we'd better head back before the tide cuts us off. Wait, what about my shoe? Never fear, Cridlington's here. <laughs> Thanks, Elvis. You saved my shoe. That's what the jaws of life are for. Rescue, sir. Ask Tom to meet me at the Flood's house in the 4 by 4 Ready-ho! <laughs> we need to organise a search party. If we give Radar some clues to sniff, he might pick up their trail. Whereabouts on Ponty Panty Mountain were they going, Mike? Sorry, Tom. I, I keep racking me brains, but I just can't remember. Um... Oh, now, that looks like Helen's. Here you go, Radar. Find Helen. Ponty Panty Mountain is that way, Sam. I know. Where is he taking us? Here. 
We're searching for Penny and your mum, Mandy. Radar took one sniff of your mother's blouse and led us straight here. That's not a blouse. That's a dress and it's mine. Oh, I can't believe you gave Radar the wrong clothes to sniff, Dad. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't remember whose was whose. This is definitely Mum's. Wait! I remember! I remember where Helen said they were going. The well path and over tall hill. Come on, Rita. You can find them. Oh, oh. Without electricity? No. And we can't cook the sausages either. It's a disaster. <gasps> the rain stopped! We can go outside. I'll set up the barbecue and we can finish the sausages on that. I'll help. You will do no such thing. Right. We'll need paper napkins too so we can eat the sausages with our fingers. Uh... Oh. Hello? Oh, hi, Penny. You want to speak to Helen? Oh, here she is. Hello, Penny. I'm really sorry to have to ask you, Helen. It's Station Officer Steele's nose. He had an accident in the blackout. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I won't be long. It's Station Officer Steele's nose. Make sure you all take care now. Oh, at last! Great. Now we can see to test the smoke alarm. Ah, there you go, Dillis. And the rain stopped too. Things are looking up. Hooray! We can help the party and sing the sound in the garden after all. Nope, Bukitin. Are you sure? Quite sure. Just a graze. Oh, I'm glad the power is back on. I don't like the idea of Mike being in charge in the dark. I quite agree, Helen. It's not everyone who can stay calm in the dark, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sausages are nearly done! Oh, and here's Helen. Ma'am! <laughs> oh, wonderful! I've arrived just in time and didn't have to do anything. That was the plan. Oh, the napkins. I'll get them. No, I don't want you to do anything, remember? Oh no! Probably something to do with the power cut. I'm back. Not for long, Sam. Come on. Right. So nobody's inside, you say? No, we're all out here. Okay. Penny, we'll need breathing apparatus. Okay, Sam. Can you turn the electricity off at the mains, Penny? It's on, Sam. So if you have.
have a power cut, you must always switch off your cooker. Otherwise, you might forget when the power comes back on again. Oh, come on now, mate. Stop fooling about. You need to get back to the wild where you belong. Shoo! <laughs> you must have been feeding it too well, Tom. Shoo! Wallabies, not again! <laughs> that bird really likes it here, Tom. Uh, mountain rescue's not just for people, you know. <laughs> help! 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 It's no use, Mandy. Nobody can hear you way out here. What about Charlie? He's too far away, Mandy. There's no way he can hear you. And who's that with him? Oh, no!
here, Charlie. Oh, uh, hello, Sam. Uh, nothing really. I, I, I just hit a rock and, and fell overboard. And my foot's stuck in the lobster pot. I, I, I can't get up. Oh, dear. I'll dive down and take a look. You must have been going pretty fast when you hit that rock, Charlie. I know. I was trying to be a hero. Come back. Come on, let's go home. For all we know, Lion might be back there waiting for us right now. It's a penny! I wish Lion would come back. We will, Bronwyn. Mountain rescue is not just for people, you know. There they are, Penny. Hi, Tom. Can we set up a winch so you can lower me down? No worries, mate. Okay, Tom. Red is what I said. Oh, there's Bronwyn. He thinks I'm just being friendly. I need to let him know we're in danger. I can't believe I forgot my phone. Red is for danger. <laughs> Red is for... Red is for danger. Red is for danger. Something's wrong.
No answer. Better ring emergency services. Telephone Mountain Rescue! Well, no worries, mate. Uh, I mean, sir, I'll find them. Nipper? How did you get out here? Nipper! Come back! Flood. Why isn't anybody answering their phones today? Hello? <laughs> Nipper brought me. Nipper! What a clever boy. You're going to be fine. We need to get you to a hospital to have this leg x-ray. Tom, we're going to need a stretcher down here. What you want, Sam? Sam will look after you now. I'll meet you at the hospital. of Lion. He wasn't in the shed, I'm sure of it. Ooh, oh, well done, Sam. That's lucky. Oh, thank goodness. I want to go home now to see if Lion's turned up. I'll give you a lift. Oh, but we haven't seen all the fireworks yet. I think we've had enough fireworks for one night. Me too. Next time we're going to a proper display. It's much safer. We haven't put out a fire that big for a long time. So long, I nearly forgot how to do it. <laughs> what was that noise? Did you hear it, Elvis? Well, I never. It's Lion!
Uh, what brings you into my kitchen today, Norman Price? Nothing. I mean, I wanted to show you something. Something really cool. <laughs> you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Norman Price. I know exactly what you're up to. You do? Yes. I know how much you love carrots. What? <laughs> Stay away from that cooker. Out of my kitchen. Go on, out. Uh, out. But, but, I, no, I, I just... But, it, oh, uh, but, I, no, I... A chip up, a chip up, I love stew. A chip up, peanut butter, yes I do. A peanut butter, carrot chop, chicken stew. I gotta get my teeth in some How's the dinner coming along today? Nothing burnt, I trust? <laughs> I've just put the stew on to simmer. It should be ready in about an hour. Very good. Fire prevention is hungry work, you know. <gasps> I say! <gasps> Station Officer Steel! Norman Price! Don't stop right there, young man! Hmm. Not a bad little plane. Norman! Hello, Sam. How are you getting on with your paper aeroplanes? Terrible. Nobody else in Ponty Pandy even likes paper planes. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I think I panicked. the fire you saw, Dillis? There! Over there! I saw the bright orange flames glowing through the trees. Oh. Oh. Oh, dear. <laughs> Mom, that's the sunset. Norman Price, if you hadn't been telling your mother so many scary stories, this never would have happened. If you're going to carry on like this, we might as well go home right now. Sorry, Trevor. Sorry, Mum. I, I promise not to tell any more stories. Well, we better call back and tell the fire brigade it was a false alarm. <laughs> what? A false alarm? Uh, stand down, men and women. False alarm, men and women. Repeat, stand down, men. It's a false alarm, Elvis. We'd better go back. There's the fire. I'd better phone Sam and let him know. Hello? Hello, Sam. 
I've located the fire. You'd better get up here. Uh, we're on our way. You tell Station Officer Steele what's happened. Norman Price, what did I tell you about making up all these scary stories? No, I, I'm not making it up. It's true. Come and look. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear. We should never have left the campfire unattended.